So we've got the last of the Tessa Roadsters from China, the Barn Find Roadsters pulled out. It's been pressure washed, it's been cleaned. From here it's going to go inside for a full diagnostic workup and by next week we'll have a lot more information about this car. Remember not to turn the steering wheel. Victor. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, you're okay here. You got lots of room. All right. Now that's a good picture, a new picture. Cool. Those are surprisingly resilient after all these years. Are you recording me? Yes. Now I have my sunglasses on. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, uh, we did notice some further rodent damage on this one, not into the wires, but into the boot on the door wiring harness. So we've got the car in here now. We have a 12 volt battery connected to the uh, 12 volt section, which is now going to wake up the vehicle management system we're going to then extract CAN signals from the VMS module, and it's going to feed into this laptop, which is then going to tell us a lot of information about the car's 13-year slumber, when it first got bricked, what the condition of the battery is, what the actual odometer reading is, and from there we'll be able to extract the rest of the information about the car. Whoa, it's puking cooler. That's okay, the pump's running. That means that the uh, rodents have chewed into the rubber. Uh, okay. Since we're not going to drive it, it's okay for the coolant to puke. Victor to the rescue. So what we have here is Scott, one of our lab engineers, who is uh, using this uh, CAN signal laptop, is tapping into the vehicle management system in this VIN 1146 Roadster, and we're going to extract a lot of useful information. This is almost like uh, going into the memory banks of this 13-year-old Roadster that's been asleep the entire time. Kind of like coming out of a coma, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I hear the beep. It is alive, yes. What is the screen saying? Powertrain. Powertrain problem? Battery very low charge ASAP. All right. Now let's take, let's take a shot of that. Scott is starting to tap into the consciousness of VIN 1146 and we're starting to get data. There's our serial number or the VIN number. And here comes odometer and one more click. 129.1. Very cool. I think that's about all we can get. For now, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. So something unexpected that happened, as soon as we woke up the VMS vehicle management system, it began to run the coolant pumps, which is normal, which normally runs off of the uh, large ESS pack. And uh, it began to puke coolant. So that immediately tells us that the rodents appear to have uh, had a feast with the plumbing or the rubber hoses that are in the coolant system on this particular roadster. It's been a few days since we shot the last video with the Chinese roadsters. I'm standing here by VIN 1146, which was the last roadster that we removed from the sea containers. It has been cleaned on the outside, pressure washed on the outside, and then we began to take off the skid plates. These had a lot of debris that had been deposited for 13 years and what they ended up doing was cleaning these thoroughly, not only pressure washing, also removing all the stains and debris. And uh, we're now standing underneath the Roadster and what we can see here is, again, 
there are certain aspects that look brand new and then there are other parts that look like the rodents that were uh, traversing through these cars actually left their mark. Um, but in most cases, you'll see that the hardware looks brand spanking new. There's a little bit of flash rust at times. Um, things like these cables under normal circumstances would be darker and stained. And um, here you can see, for example, this uh, tie rod is uh, rusted whereas uh, the flashing on this is reasonably intact. Now, moving toward the front of the vehicle, uh, it's rare that you see the underbelly of a roadster this clean. And by the way, we still do not know what these discolorations are. All three cars had this, and uh, that's going to remain a mystery for now. The um, crash box here in the front, or armature as they also call it, uh, appears to be very much intact. There's a little bit of flash rust on these horn screws here, possibly here as well, even though they were tin plated. But what we didn't see in this car was any of the rodent damage chewing into the insulation on the wiring from what is visible here. This particular car sustained the most damage of all the ones that we had pulled out. There was something pushed up against the nose cone on this car and it was most likely the pillows that they, the inflatable pillows that they were using and it was just too close to the uh, side of the seat container or the front of the seat container in the car. This one also has some of the worst PPF residue and uh, we will have a full report here from the PPF experts that were just here that were giving us some opinions and weighing in on the remediation or removal and repair of this uh, cracked and uh, yellow PPF. Watch for that video. So the next step for these three Chinese orphaned roadsters that were stored in a sea container for 13 years is a decision needs to be made how much repairs will be done. What we're not sure of, and we're going to of course get the sellers involved in this, Will collectors be interested in taking these cars precisely as is without any repairs done to them at all? Or will it be more advantageous to remove the PPF, do any body repairs like on this one, and um, repair the wiring harnesses and some of the rodent damage, and again, make these operational without inserting a $40,000 Tesla Roadster battery pack? These are decisions that the sellers are going to need to make and the potential bidders or buyers can weigh in and uh, help them decide what direction they want to take. One of the options that we thought about is we could make a list of remediation points, such as fixing the wiring harnesses, um, removing the old PPF, doing any repaint that may be necessary, and fundamentally restoring and refurbishing these to like new condition, and have a menu of items that prospective bidders can select. Thank you for joining us on this exciting journey, discovering these uh, barn find roadsters. We don't think that anything like this will ever be repeated again because I think for now, most of the roadsters have been identified. And um, we, if this has been a fun project for us. It has taken many months. The cars were originally going to go from China to Dubai and uh, potentially sold to a bidder that uh, bid $2 million on these cars, but was willing to put them back on the road. Um, at this point, all bets are off. What's going to happen with these cars? Again, my personal preference is that Tesla buys these three vehicles, which were untitled, brand new from the factory at one point, and puts one of these into each of the Giga factories on display in the front lobby showing their DNA and their history. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have a lot more videos coming out soon. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video, and drop a like. Thank you.